Hi, my name is Nick Jeffries of New Projects, West London's number one design and build construction company. You're watching New Weekly, episode 15. Massive property, 12 acres of land. It's got a tennis, tennis pavilion. Beautiful job. Completely unmodernized, desperate for some uh, love. Oh, what a lovely client. She's lived in that house for 30 years. Bought it for 200 grand, and I bet you it's worth four million quid now. If any of you guys out there are subcontractors and you would like to work for new projects off Fulham, we are looking for honest, skilled subbies to join us. If we took away this alleyway, you could have this could all be infield and you could have a, a, a kitchen extension from one width of the garden to the next. Here's 10 questions and answers people have been submitting on Instagram and Facebook. Number one, how did I get into construction? Well, 12 years ago, I was a off-market agent and someone asked me, if you find a project, I will give you the money. So basically, I found a little opportunity on Rightmove, which was a studio apartment in Primrose Hill. The client invested, I think, £250,000. He invested £30,000 into the refurbishment. We did up the project and we sold it for, I think, £350,000 three months later. So that was my first construction project. Number two. What was my first project in new? Well, the first project I did in New was in Holyport Road in Fulham. That was a project we did for an end user, uh, which was a kitchen extension, a loft conversion, and a full refurb. That was our first project for New. What was our biggest project? Well, our biggest project was in about 2016, we did a triple basement new build project in Abingdon Road, South Kensington. This was 12,000 square feet in total with a bill cost of circa nine million pounds. I think the properties were valued at 10 million pounds each. So you can see that's a large project. Number four, have I worked with anyone famous? Yes, we've worked for a few VIPs, including Kylie Minogue, David Gandhi, Natalie Imbruglio, Binky Felixstad, Nikki Clark, and that's just to name a few. Um, but again, we like working with celebrities because they got great social media and it brings and attracts more attention. Um, what are my goals for the next three years? My goals are to grow the business, to create some fantastic content, to bring great people into new, because I can't do it all myself, people who have got entrepreneurial mindsets, and we want to keep doubling the turnover each year. So that's my goals for the next three years. 
Number six, would we do a TV program if we were asked? Yes, we would do. Going back four or five years ago, we did a couple of TV shows. We, we've done Posh Neighbours at War on Channel 4, and that was about um, basement projects with neighbours going crazy because of the noise and the dirt and you know that kind of thing and and um, we had uh, I think it was Channel 4 coming around one of the projects we were working on taking videos doing a bit of uh, video of me, me and my ex-business partner so that was that and also we've done Bloomberg news about iceberg basements and we were approached by the company who did the jump, the TV program, the jump, the skiing program, to do a program uh, about um, following a designer build company. I wanted to do it, but my next business partner didn't. Um, number seven, what would you advise someone who's starting a construction company? My advice is just go for it. It's all about moving forward, winning your first contract. Don't be afraid to go into an area which you might be nervous about. You know, for us, when we started, we went from a small job and quite quickly, we went into basements. We never did a basement, but the client said, can you do it? And we went, yeah, we can do it. And then we just brought in people who can do it for us put a margin on top. You know, if you were the main contractor, you can sub parts of the build out. If you need people to do specialist uh, trades, you just get the specialist in, don't you? You put your margin on top and that's it. You're, the risk is with you as the main contractor because the client is signing the contract with you. You're dealing with all the subbies. Um, number eight, is building a brand important for a construction company? very, very important because that gives you the edge over your competition. Because most builders, most architects, most interior designers, they're just focusing on doing the work. They're not focusing on the business. How other people looking out on you through social media is affecting your um, pipeline. You know, basically the, the brand, building your brand will build trust and rapport with your client. Because every time someone sees you, they're saying, oh, new projects, new projects, new projects. And it's just an easier sell when it comes down to closing the deal. Number nine, what advice would you give someone in construction or architecture about social media? I would say, create as much content as possible, create as much video as possible, create as many articles as possible, and post on, on every single platform possible. Everything, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, Snapchat, everything, times 10, all the time, every day. <laughs> Number 10. Who motivates me? Well, when I need motivating, I put on my audio book in the car, like I've done today. Me and Will's in the car, we drove to a, a job. And we listen to, it could be Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone's super motivating. You know, uh, if you listen to Sell or Be Sold, Be Obsessed or Be Average, brilliant audio books you know so when you're driving and you're going to a meeting and you need to be up, upbeat and motivated maybe you're a bit stressed out you stick these on and all of a sudden your brain is on fire because he's he's pumped in so much upbeat information you know it's going to only affect you in a positive way so there's 10 questions i've answered for you
Hi everyone, this is Nick Jeffries on a cold Tuesday morning. I'm just heading over to a viewing in St John's Avenue, Putney. And this project is a basement under a fantastic, huge house. I originally went there last week, but the lady turned me away on the doorstep because her daughter has just come down with COVID. So now I'm free to go around there to have a little look around. Um, but yesterday, I didn't do anything on a Monday. I had such a stressful day. I couldn't even bear to put the camera up to my face. I know Zoltan was wandering around taking a few B-rolls, but I couldn't bear it. You know, so sometimes when you are under pressure running a business, the last thing you want to do is get a camera in your face. And um, yeah, it was a, quite a tough day yesterday. I'll speak about it later on, uh, but there's going to be some changes within new and um, hopefully for the better and um, no change is easy people have to be replaced sometimes and um, yeah so watch this space but in the meantime you know we've got so many opportunities coming in um, we are looking for a quantity surveyor so if you live in kind of west london you know be nice to have, have, have a local qs and you want to spend maybe one or two days in the office working on our tenders we get lots of projects coming in through end users and they don't have planning they don't have any drawings, but they want an idea on potential bill costs. We need a, we need a, a QS to help us bring together budget estimates uh, and also QSs to help us work on tender packs from architects. So if you would like to work for new as a QS on a freelance basis, get in contact. So on other news, Will is at our project in Cotswolds today. So he's spent two hours on the road heading up, heading up there. And uh, this is just to have a look what's going on on this big kitchen extension we are building. Uh, progress has been a little bit slow, but he's gone up there to kickstart it with a new subcontractor who is going to be really going all guns blazing to finish the job uh, at speed but quality as well um, on the way back will is going to be popping into badgemore to meet the client to discuss her six and a half thousand square foot property refurb beautiful uh, detached massive property 12 acres of land it's got a tennis tennis pavilion beautiful job completely unmodernized desperate for some uh, love so uh, we've been working on this one for three to four months Alastair Downey has been working on the designs as an interior designer so Will's gone up there uh, I think his meetings there at one o'clock today and then he's gonna go he's not gonna bother coming into the office he's just gonna head home So just completed the viewing and uh, what a lovely client. She's lived in that house for 30 years. Bought it for 200 grand and I bet you it's worth four million quid now. It's massive. She wants a, a new build property where the garage is and she wants a big, big kitchen extension and a side return. So I'll send round Alistair Downey and uh, he can speak to her next week. So looking good. I'm just heading off back to the office now to see um, see what's going on. Yeah. Well, I just is, this, some is this your dinner, Zoltan? Breakfast, dinner and lunch. <laughs> Would you just like eating like crisps? Yeah. 
What are you doing? Yeah, so, so I'm checking out, you know, this um, color yeah. same thing. Really good. Uh, I'm taking away a lot of calculations, obviously, sometimes, you know, when I do some steps. Yeah. But um, yeah, I can show it here. Is the guys showing here you know, what was before yeah. after? Yeah. Before so after. So it has this before after key there. there. Very nicely, you can see that. Or um, he just he just actually correcting mm. the hair now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he sh he can change, you yeah, know, only yeah, going to the hair and going a little yeah, bit of saturation on it, more yeah. colorful a bit. So it's not gonna be like dull. So Zoltan's got a bit of new, a bit some more software for his. What is it? Color editing. It's a color, it's yeah, color and grading. Yeah. Color grading for yeah. our videos, uh -huh. so. If you like that sort of stuff. So I've just left the office and I'm on the way to Munster Road in Fulham to view a loft conversion flat refurb project. This one came in late last night and the guy said, can I pop round tomorrow just to have a little look and to give him some ballpark numbers. It's oven ready, meaning it's got planning, party walls are signed off, design drawings are approved and uh, there's a full detail specification. So uh, let's go and have a look. While we're walking down this street on the way to Munster, let's have a look what these properties have had done. So that one there in the middle, you can see the two Velux windows. That's at a loft conversion. Same as that one next door. That one hasn't, that one has. Most of them actually would have had loft conversions and this is a pretty straightforward uh, street in Fulham. We've had a few opportunities in these mansion blocks. They're small one bed, two bedroom apartments. So I literally just had a call from a lady. She lives in Finsbury Park and uh, she's got a two bedroom flat around about 900 square feet and she's had a flat she's lower ground floor and apparently the drains have bu uh, backed up and flooded the whole flat so um she's going to email me the floor plans a brief summary i said is there a budget to work with has the insurance company said how much they want to pay out uh the answer was no and uh, she wants a few other bits done as well she wants her bathrooms remodeled and refurb so i uh, shall send one of the boys over there either tomorrow or Thursday. So that's another little one, just come in out of the blue. So this is Munster Road, and this is probably a main cut through from Fulham up to Hammersmith. Hammersmith up there, that's where we're going, uh, at the top of the road where the property is. But well, all these are lovely, lovely streets. This is called Munster Village. Done a few down there. So while we're walking to the job, if any of you guys out there are subcontractors and you would like to work for new projects off Fulham, we are looking for honest, skilled subbies to join us and to take on some of our projects as a whole. Um, so if you've got a team, and you want to take on, i.e. maybe kitchen extension projects, loft conversions, full refurbs, get in contact. We are looking and uh, we have several opportunities which will be starting over the next three months. We want to find trusted summies for, so get in contact. And out in the California sunshine We wore no shoes through alley in shattered windows throwing baseballs Conversion is going to be and the flat and the entrance is just on the side so let's go and have a look 
viewing completed, now heading back to the office. Very small project, um, 300 square feet for the mansard, full refurb of the apartment, and uh, it's not for new, but I will get one of my trusted subbies to take a look because that would be a great little job for one of those boys. Um, so I'm just literally on the way back to the office, walking down Munster Road, and there's a few nice little projects on Munster. And um, Munster Road has got a little bit of a, uh, mm, what do you call it? Horrific, horrific is a good word, uh, history. Because this is the road where Jill Dando lived and she got shot, didn't she? They think she got assassinated on the doorstep. And I think it was number 59 or something. That's 47. Yeah, so poor old Jill Dando got shot right at her doorstep. ugly mansard up there isn't it that was done probably 20 years ago 25 years ago without planning permission now they hate front mansards on most streets in Fulham there's another one look but you would think because a few have got them it would be easy to achieve but no it's not there's three more up there. Just because they've got them, it doesn't mean if you live on the same street, you're gonna get approval. And as you see, they've all been done probably 30 years ago. Bloody ugly. There's a project in the distance, scaffolded up, wrapped, with a tin roof. They're probably having a complete refurb. Mansard, it's very neat and tidy. I like the wrapping. What about this house here? Look, do you like that color? I don't like it. The dark colors. Blossoms out that. <laughs> So I'm just online and I'm going to see what is available in Fulham today, which is a development opportunity. So I've just searched Fulham alone and I've just seen something here. So Daisy Lane, not quite sure where this is. Let's click on it. 1.7 million. Let's just have a little look. Okay. Hurlingham Club, Daisy Lane. Okay, okay, I know where it is. So it's just, it just backs onto the Hurlingham Club. A little cut through. As you see, let's have a look at the images. <clears throat> Quite a pretty, semi-detached. It's got the alleyway at the garden. Looks to me completely unmodernized. So look, look at 
look at it, perfect for development opportunity. Let's just take a look through all the photos first before we start looking at the floor plans. Looks like it hasn't been uh, touched for a good 30 to 40 years. Look, well, I can see there is some kind of window up there. Is there a loft conversion? I don't know. No kitchen extension. Garden needs to be sorted out. So let's just click onto this and see. Right, ground floor needs to be opened up. You can probably get uh, a kitchen extension. If, look, if, if, if we took away this alleyway, you could have, this could all be infilled and you could have a, a, a kitchen extension from one width of the garden to the next with bifolding uh, doors into the garden, making the kitchen, diner, just one big open plan room. Um, so, little tiny cellar. So you could have a basement under the whole footprint. You know, this could all be basement. Bedroom, ensuite, utility room, games room, whatever you want. It's gonna cost you, I don't know, 400k to do the basement down there, but it's gonna add 900 square feet on this house. Um, first floor, again, layouts really dated. Quite nice here, look, you've got, a little, you've got a little roof terrace here. Again, so you've got the family bathroom here, okay. You've got the master here. You've got some kind of tiny, tiny on suite and it's weird because you've got the staircase here going up into the second floor loft so there is a loft but there's only only a very small velux window let's just go back to the photos again let's have a look at the street view so street view you can't see what's going on here can you so there may be some velux windows there but i don't think so Go back in here. I just think they've converted it and they've just got one little skylight. There's no skylights here at all. So really, it needs a proper loft conversion with a rear mansard. You could build out over the flat roof terrace here. Be, or have a have a maybe glass balustrade around the outside, a door open here. This could be a yeah, it could be a study. But it is a shame. I'll tell you what I would do. I would have the master bedroom here. I would block up this door here. I would have this as the master ensuite. I would have. Um, I would probably make this a bit smaller and I have another bedroom ensuite here with a roof terrace out onto the flat roof and then open up the loft conversion because you've got a little you've got a little kitchenette in here you don't want that just have this as a bedroom maybe two bedrooms with a Jack and Jill ensuite so I think you can so they're wanting how much they want? 1.7 million for this property. And it is 1,700 square feet. So that's a, they're asking a thousand pounds a square feet, a square foot. So if we increase the basement by 900, um, increase the ground floor by adding an extension, maybe 300. So that's 1,200 square feet. You can increase the square footage. You can uh, build the mansard out the back. That means you're gonna go into the eaves, which is nice. So you're gonna create a little bit more square footage there. So that's 1,002, maybe 200 square feet, 1,400 square feet for the basement, kitchen extension and mansard. So let's just get a little calculation out here. So 1,700 and 47 square feet plus 900 for the basement plus 300 for the kitchen extension plus 
I would say 200 for the mansard. So that's going to bring it up to, give or take, 3,100 square feet. So 3,100 square feet times that by 1,000 pounds a square foot. That's just over 3 million quid. And that bill cost is going to be four, five, about 700K. So resale value, 3.1. Buy it for 1.7 plus 700K equals 2.4. You're going to have at least 600 grand profit margin minus your uh, construction um, interest on the, on the loan. But there you go, that's quite a nice project. Um, so let's have a look at one more quick one. That is in Daisy Lane in Fulham. Let's see what else we can find. Wardour Road, it's a lovely road just around the corner from the office. Look, they've done already done a kitchen extension, bifolding doors into the garden, 1.6 million. Um, 2,000 square feet, so pound per square foot, that's about 900 pound a square foot. That, that's quite a good buy for that. Uh, end of terrace. Let's have a quick look at this one. So Bishop's Road, Fulham, just around the corner, asking 1.65 mil. Again, it's 1,615 square feet. They're wanting 1,000 square foot. 1,000, they want 1,000 pound a square foot for this prop property. Um, you can do a basement under the footprint here because there's a little cellar. There's the footprint of the house. Why can't you do a basement under the footprint here? Sure you can. So you can have light wells in the bay window. So that is gonna almost, well, not double, but almost, Almost uh, adding, I don't know, what's that down here? I reckon 600 square feet extra by adding the basement. Um, it has got, um, it's got the loft done, but it looks a bit, uh, the layouts are a bit wrong. But again, um, potential for a basement, uh, adding maybe, uh, yeah, 400, 400, 400K. What we got here? Let's have a look at another one. Wandsworth Bridge Road in Fulham. Very busy road, right on the bridge. Um, let's have a look at the pics. A little bit messy, dated, tired. 1.5 mil for this house, everyone. Floor plans, 1,800 square feet. 1,800 square feet, so they're asking 1.5 mil. 1.5 mil divided by 1,866 square feet. So they're asking 830 pounds a square foot. 830 pound a square foot. It needs a kitchen extension, maybe even a side return and a kitchen extension to create 300 square feet by folding doors into the garden, relocating the kitchen so it's all open plan. Um, massive bedroom. Look at this bedroom here. So you're going to increase the square footage. You've got a basement. It's not a full basement. If they increase the basement into the garden, uh, you know, to the back, probably another four or 500 square feet. So on this project here, two, 300 square feet on the extension, 300, 400 square feet on the basement. And there you can see, if you're gonna add, you know, 700 square feet times that, it's, uh, this is unmodernized, remember, 830. So you're buying unmodernized. If you're gonna increase the square footage by 700 square feet, and it is already 1,000, 866 square feet. That's 2,566 square feet. If you then times that by a resale value when it's modernized and it's looking amazing, thousand pound a square foot, <clears throat> that's going to be a resale value of 
2.5 million pounds. So you buy for 1.55, and after you've done your development and you resell, it's gonna be 2.5 mil. So that's a nice one. So that's just a quick look of what is on the market in Fulham, and a little summary on, you know, a little desktop survey of how much, how much can we add to these properties by adding uh, loft conversions, mansards, pod rooms, basements. So yeah, all good. So me, Billy and Will are outside Stafford Mansions and this project is the 900 square foot apartment where we're gonna be refurbishing to a very high standard. Let's go in and meet the client and take a look. What's going on here then? Is this you lot put this down there, isn't it? We put that down yeah. last time. And Jack said to come up before Christmas. Um, as long as we take it, but... It's like a bloody a tropical jungle, isn't it? Huh? It's a jungle down there. So what's the wall got to come down? So he wants these two walls to be knocked through here. Yeah. What you're saying, yeah. Jimmy? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So he wants that as a through lap because that's going to be a kitchen now, not a... That's a now bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. change to a kitchen, bathroom's going to be... Have you seen Will's updated right? drawings, which we... No, they're just engineers, so... Yeah. You've got, you got the other drawings? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're there, cool. That was an old door, and that's been covered in. I don't know what he wants to do with that, but he wants this taken out. This is 1990. What's that moved? Well, you'd have to probably update it. 90. It still works. Oh, it's given him two different options in, I think. Because that's his pause one, maybe pause two. We've got three. Okay. No, you don't want to use that. Just, you've got to spend fifteen hundred moving it. <laughs> We've got to try and make it look as, as good as possible. No, it needs to be sharp. So, so what we'll yeah. do is we'll take so, so when that back there is so rough at the moment, we'll yeah. take a knife and we'll cut right into yeah. it. And then the thickness of that plaster there has got the same thickness yeah. from back. We can't yeah. have it any we can't be protruding because yeah. that's got to stay. Yeah. So obviously it, it's good to if you look here actually. Because if we go all the way up and touch the top, yeah, um, we then need party, party wall. wall yeah. Yeah. So you're going to be happy sitting them. I want it the same as this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, Obviously, when we first discussed, we wanted to keep everything slick, but just to keep the performance going forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense to now go and start messing about with pipe. Yeah. 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 yeah, because our ceilings are so high anyway. The other thing we can do is, oh, I hate seeing wires, I hate seeing any of it. Also, we get rid of the radiators. Yep. Right, so the L can go. All that stuff can go as well. Just the point in there. Yeah. So yeah. you're quite right, they can yeah. be channeled down yeah. and then across over yeah. to there. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll just put that one there. We'll just take that down here. Yep. Sort of. You can see it out here. Where's it going from out there? No, you, you can see it right out here. All right. So, 
It's next door. Yeah. yeah, I think once upon a time, obviously that would have, but then there's no way to it because. Like, That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. Friday morning and it's bloody freezing. I've just picked up a surveyor's report. So I'm just heading over to a project in Fulham to take a look at what needs to be done to make the property perfect again. So this project is only around the corner from the office. Waldemar Road. Yeah, Waldemar Road. The surveyor has done a full report and uh, there seems to be quite a few issues with the property. I'm not quite sure if she's just bought the property or she's buying the property or she's had it for a while. So we will discover this in about five minutes time. Well, my God, what a stressful week it's been. What a stressful week. Oh, uh, there's Will just pulling up. His mate's just dropped him off. Um, yeah, but guess what? We've got through it. I feel better. Things had to change. And um, it's always good to move forward. Don't hold grudges. And uh, keep those projects coming in. Because without the projects coming in, a business so let's find a parking spot here we go extension to okay. come out exactly Which the I same. I think it's probably a bit too much given that the garden is not huge. Garden's okay. not not too huge, no. I think we've probably will stop about here. Yeah, maybe the same as maybe just the same as here because I think the planners will like to see uniformity. Just enjoy that I sent to you. Perfect. Um with water filling. Is it because they haven't got enough slope? What are these down here? Yeah. Viewing done, lovely house. It's full of collectibles, so it's very interesting when you walk around. They've got uh, a six foot full size horse uh, in there, uh, which is a lampshade, would you believe it? And ostrich eggs. Uh, God, they've got this... Um, swordfish it's it's sword on a mantelpiece it's unbelievable looks like something at the uh, 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 Jurassic Park so the lady would like a kitchen extension to start off with and then next year she's got a lovely roof terrace but it's big 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 and uh, Maybe she'd go up there and uh, build a loft conversion up there. Maybe half and half. A very interesting project. Now we're just off to Lysia Street to see another client who phoned up uh, this morning. She has had a basement dug five years ago by a company. They've gone out of business and the basement is leaking and it smells of damp. So let's take a look. It may be a little bit too small for new, but if it needs to be stripped out and the tanking re, um, redone, then that could be big money. So let's go and have a look at the lady's house in Lissett Street. So I'm just parked up at the top of Lissier Street in Fulham 
and um, just here is Holy Port Road and Woodlawn Avenue and these two projects are the first two we did when we started new back in 2010 um, let's have a look at this one the Holy Port Road is literally just the, the next road along but this one backs onto it so we started Holy Port Road and then the guy bought this property and he said do you want to do this one as well so we had two on the go at the same time and um, they back to back each other both of the gardens are opposite so this one is here so that is 41 Holy Port we did this one kitchen extension loft conversion full refurb so that was one of the second properties we did when we started new <laughs> So, viewing done, what a, a beautiful house. Beautiful, beautiful house. Lovely antiques everywhere. She got great style, great taste. And um, the basement, slight bit of damp in the corner, not the end of the world. Uh, we get some investigation going on there. There's, I think there's a problem with the with the drainage outside. And then she would like to have a look at a front mansard and uh, introduce Freddie to talk about a light refurb in the house, painting, decorating, so on and so forth. So yeah, so I'm heading back to the office going to pick Will Nickel up and then we're going to head over to the flat uh, in the city on the Thames so I will speak to you in a bit. What's the paint called? This designer's guild, it's called Venetian Lace. It's got a lovely sort of colourful tone to it.
So that's another week coming to the end. I've been out on the road all day and we've had three really good viewings. So the weekend's here. I hope you all have a good time. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share to our YouTube channel. And I'll see you all next week. See ya. Just